already as she was just in the process of writing the eighth book uh -huh. when we started filming right. um, so I don't think uh, any of her Scottish knowledge will ever be used I mean uh, the producers really taken to Scotland as well and he's mm. got a wonderful he's taken a castle to live in and, uh, <laughs> where's a <it> kill <laughs> looks exactly like the control room at George Bank, which was built at around the same time, around the late 60s, early 70s. So Doctor Who is clearly kind of channeling what people expected a sort of a science institute to look like. Um, and um, I think the other thing that, that's really quite noticeable is, did you notice that the commanding officer in that scene was a woman, which was actually quite radical, I think, for 1970. We don't really think about that now. Lots of, when we see unit in the stories now, there's lots of um, female officers and soldiers and things. But back in the 70s, that was actually quite a daring thing. The sky, um, just here, and to stare at it for 10 days. Now, Hubble costs £50,000 an hour to run, so you can do the maths yourself. Um, 10 days staring at a blank patch of sky, why on earth would you do that? It's a lot of money to spend taking a photograph, a long exposure photograph of a blank patch of sky. This is the photo, though, that it took. It's one of the most extraordinary photographs ever taken uh, in human history, I would argue. And what you can see in this picture are literally thousands of galaxies that Hubble can see because it collected that light for 10 days and gathered all the light and said, This is awesome. So we are going to talk with you guys what it is to be a feminist, whether you're a young woman or a young man, um, and in particular how perhaps it will affect you guys as you grow up and uh, become uh, the next leaders of, of the, our world and become parents and have to raise your own youngsters. Um, Caroline, here we are. And we're sitting in the sunshine and look at you guys, you're all, you've programmed this festival, uh, you're educated, you girls get exactly the same education as these boys. You can choose what you wear, you can choose who you see, who you go out with probably. And here's this bloody tweet, and then I dreamt about banknotes last night. <laughs> so maybe I'm not. Anyway, sorry. Um, I dreamt about Scottish banknotes, so, and, and I remember saying, oh, they're so nice. <laughs> a bit tragic. Um, I don't always dream about bangers. In fact, mostly I don't. Anyway, moving on. Feminism. So, yeah, I actually didn't used to be a feminist. I haven't really been a feminist for very long. In fact, I've been an anti-feminist, I would say, for much longer than I've been a feminist. Um, and I think that in many ways that is kind of the default position uh, for a young woman growing up now in a culture that tells you that women just a bit Rubbish, really. What that concept will
Stuart Kelly. Um, Stuart is the literacy editor of Scotland on Sunday and the author of The Book of Lost Books. <laughs> However, most importantly, he is a Doctor Who mega fan and expert of Doctor Who. Thank you. Woo! Woo! We should be careful in this event because when we did the Doctor Who event last year, I'm very good friends with Robert Shearman who wrote the episode Darwin. And I've been down seeing him in London and he said, uh, oh, you know, as part of the uh, 50th anniversary, they found some of these lost episodes. Because no, we've even seen her in different episodes on the trailers. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, I mean, it's... And it wasn't even a particularly ingenious way uh, around it. Is anyone sad to see Jenna Coleman leave Doctor Who? <laughs> 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 I really like her. You like her? No. I mean, you like her? Yeah, yeah. You, want, you like her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clara, do you, Clara fans? Do we have fans? Yeah. Fan? Yeah. You, you have a Clara fan? I, a Clara I quite fan? like the actress. Do you? Yeah. She's a um, so the next thing is, is about analysing humour. Um, oh, that's right, I was writing a script for this television show and uh, I created the character of a newsreader that was going to be in the background uh, of a lot of stuff, just burbling away. Sometimes we'd actually see, you know, it's a bit like we're watching the news, but usually it'd be on a television screen in the background. And I just thought it would be funny to write just loads of stupid news reports, and I wrote loads of them. And one of my running gags was that uh, I don't know if they still do it anymore, but they used to say, and the main news again. They would just run through a summary just in headlines. Do they still do that in the main? I don't watch them. I mean, they still do that, okay? And one of the jokes was that the headlines of the summary never matched any of the stories that came before. Um, I can't remember much of it. I remember one of my favourite headlines was there's been another sighting of the Hyde Park Rhino. Just thought that was fun. So I put that in. That was a surprise. And you have to wait till the end of the sentence before you get the, the release of tension. So if I said the essence of humour is surprise, thinking a surprise is coming, which is, that's like a, a threat, isn't it? A, a, a surprise is coming, okay, what's it going to be? That is why you see when you, that is why you laugh when you see a joke in. If I stop there, you'd have no idea what's coming. There's no... <laughs> it looks dark, right? the darkness. Oh. We are now in the middle of forest for our Dark Skies Experience creative writing event with Pippa Goldschmidt and we've also got Keith who is from the visitor centre and Andy who is photographer for the festival and Yvonne's here Hi. and everyone else is attending and totally you're a first aider Siobhan hi, I'm <laughs> hi I've been somewhat entrusted with first aid for some reason but yeah Major Centre. My name's Keith Muir. I'm the person who set up the Dark Sky Park in uh, Scotland, in the first in the UK, fifth in the world, uh, in 2009. Um, and I've been out in the dark ever since. Um, <laughs> got me a mushroom for, for jokes. But uh, so welcome. So, Carothery, um, we've just rebuilt uh, all the centres. We've just spent four and a half million pounds rebuilding the three visitor centres that we have in the park. This is the I tend to write fiction that's inspired by real science, particularly astronomy, and I've written a novel uh, about an astronomer. And I'm really interested in exploring science through fiction. I think it's a really uh, interesting and creative way of uh, getting to grips with science, of exploring the hidden histories of science, of understanding it, and especially astronomy, uh, which is such a sort of beautiful, uh, magical science. Um, so... <laughs> very interesting because they're very luminous you can see them out to enormous distances in the universe and that means that you're looking at them uh, uh, from way back as I said because the light has taken so long to travel to you that you're looking at these objects in the early universe <laughs> as you sit and knit all the day through but time won't fly and nor will you Miss Pleak Miss Pleak, you're shy and stout from peppermint creams and not going out. It's only when you fold your hands that you fly about over dreamy lands. Well, at the wool shop, customers came and went, and most of them passed the time of day 